Louise first shot to stardom in the 1990s as part of the R&B group Eternal. And now she's back with her first album in 20 years. 20 years? <laughs> Is it really 20 years? 20 years. Goodness me. Uh, of course, she's become a Strictly star as well. She's yes, here with us uh, to talk about her tour, Conquering the West End and a return to music. First, though, let's take a look at some of her hits, old and new. And Louise joins us now. The first thing I want to ask, Louise, are all these pictures of you? <laughs> yes. Because we sometimes have a moment when a guest will sit down and go, that's not me. Who's that? And we realise... <laughs> Might not look like me that much. <laughs> well, do you know what? That was the one I was wondering about, actually. That's quite Marilyn Monroe, isn't in, it? In the wig. That's for 9 to 5. Yes, so of I, course. I didn't just rock out like that one. <laughs> yeah. I promise. <laughs> now, it must be fantastic for you to go back to music, yeah. but nerve-wracking, because Heavy Love is out today. Yes. And is it a bit like when you have a baby and, and then you suddenly become very protective and nervous of it? I think so. I think, you know, are you, I wrote this album over a two-year period. It's a very personal album. Mm. Um, Coming... I never thought I'd do music again, so being here in the position where I've just released an album after 20 years, not only, to me, does it mean the world, and I've kind of bad my heart and soul a little bit on this album. Um, you don't want to fail, you know, mm. you, you want... I was so fortunate to have success 20 years ago with everything, that you just want to keep the momentum going and you, you kind of want to do what you love and you need to sell records to do what you love. So, um, mm. yeah, I'm nervous, yeah. <laughs> but excited as well. It's a, it's a moment, though, as well, because we were just talking about your boys and it's Charlie's 16 and Bo's a little bit younger than that, but... So this is the first time they will have seen you yeah. release an album as a pop singer, rather than being an actress, and, and they've seen you perform and do yeah. bits and pieces. So that's quite a thing for them as well. There's Mum the pop star. Do you know, it's been lovely for them, and there's been lots of things sort of said in papers and that, that they don't like me wearing the leotard in stretch, and it's all in good jest. Like, the kids are so understanding of, of what the industry is, but what's been so lovely is them being able to come to live gigs, come into the yeah. studio, and, and actually, I've recorded about 50 songs for this album, and then we kind of went down to the 15 for the deluxe mm. one, and they played such a big part in kind of just saying what they felt. Really? I really involved them in it, which was mm -hmm. nice for me, and it's so nice for Did me you get to... them singing on any of them or playing the triangle? No. Oh, God, no. <laughs> playing <laughs> Absolutely not. not. Get them in the background, a bit of percussion, then they no, get amazing with it. I don't know if the producers would have gone for that. This was taken very seriously, this album. <laughs> you say, in your own words, it's your heart and soul. It's yeah. a very personal album. Yeah. So what are you telling people through your lyrics and through the music? Because... Uh, you know, you've been through a lot. Yes. Yeah. And, as you say, we read a lot. And then you expose all of that through the music. So yeah. is, are you telling a story? I think, no. I mean, there's no kind of narrative through the album on a personal level mm. to the extent that people would want to read into it. But mm -hmm. as a songwriter and as a singer, all you can ever do is write what you feel in your heart um, and what you're going through. And every day, and especially over a two-year period, which was, we, we know, has been really well documented, yeah. you can only write what yeah. you're feeling on that day. Um, and sometimes it was really empowering and I'd be having a great day and be writing songs that were so about the future and moving on. And then other days, you feel slightly heartbroken and, and that comes out in your music. So there's not a narrative at all about you know, my life as a married woman or anything like that. But, of course, it's just speaking from the heart, yeah. which is... Yeah, and it needs to be authentic, doesn't it? I, for people yeah. to sort of appreciate it. The, 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 the problem ends up being, though, that we see you burying your soul and then we want to ask about it. Yes. And that's, that, but, and that's what you understand, that there's, yes. there's part of that, that that ends up being put out there, Louise. Yeah, and, and that's the, the really hard part with it all, actually, because it's catch-22. Mm. Like, you want to... You, you know, you're both parents. All you want to do is protect your mm. kids. And I'm really proud of what I've done. It, it took quite a lot of guts for me to go out and make an album and go into the West End on the back of everything. I was really nervous and I didn't really know how things would go. Strictly was a critical moment for you, wasn't it? Because it was like a moment when you thought, 
I remember what it's like to perform again. Yeah, I mean, Strictly is a mad circus <laughs> of a show. I mean, it's, it, you know, good and bad. It, it, I, I, I don't like the circus that comes with the show at all, and I found that extremely hard. But I think what it really did for me, and I know that people will be able to relate to this, it really was nice to all of a sudden, after 15 years, have a real purpose every morning and turn up to something yeah. I loved doing and not, you know, be ashamed for feeling a bit selfish that that day was my day mm -hmm. and I was going to do something I'd grown for up you. loving mm -hmm. to do. So more than even the performing in the live shows and, and you know, get into the final, it was just every morning I'd get out of bed and drop the kids at school and go, I'm going to do something I love today. How And it's going to push you and stretch that? you and challenge you as challenge well. Challenge me, give me you know, a, an ambition to carry on doing what I love. And when you have a family, you don't all of a sudden stop loving what you do. And I feel really lucky I had 15 years really at home because I have so many girlfriends that would love to have, have mm. that. But um, I just miss doing my thing. Mm. And so you went, you decided I'm going to go back, I'm going to make music, and also, as we already discussed, go back into um, performing on stage. Yes. The nine to five musical, yes. Godsend for you. Yes, I know. Yeah, and you're going back to that. I'm again. going back. Yeah, I know. I'm going back on the 10th of February. Um, do you know it was? It, again, it's that thing of having a real set something of what you're doing. I get to perform on stage at the Savoy, which is stunning, isn't it? An amazing thing. And it's quite. I mean, strictly, you have a partner, and you can be guided to a certain extent. And if you sort of slightly lose your way, they can kind of cover up. I'm just talking from personal experience. <laughs> yeah, I'm with by you. The way. <laughs> well, you get Shouted out, <laughs> left, left, go again, left. <laughs> um, but on stage, that's, you know, for you, as you say, 15 years at home with the kids and then you're out there on stage, that is quite... I know, cracking. it is. I mean, that is... The 9 to 5 is very different. When I'm sort of, like, singing my songs that I've written and I'm with my band and I'm very much in my comfort zone, all of a sudden I'm on stage and my part, as Violet News did in 9 to 5, is huge. I mean, I'm not off stage for two hours. That's a lot of words. So, um, yes. if I forget a line, I muck everyone up. And that's... He that, I mean, to wear heavy love, but that's a heavy schedule as well, to yes. go to the West End and do seven, eight shows? Eight what shows a week. Eight shows a week? Yes. And still try and be a mum? I know. you still got to do all that sort do of stuff? Do you know... Th that's where I've been really lucky with everything, with the album, with 9 to 5. Everybody's so understanding that I go and I do fits and starts, so I might go mm. do a month, have a few weeks off, and then go back to it. So I get to come in and out. Dip so your toe here. Yeah, I get to go in, work hard, but then I get mm. to still do the school run and things like that. People get unexpected things out of Strictly, and one of the things you got was a great friendship with Judge Rinder. Oh, um, <laughs> my love. Something you know, we share. They always say that, you you know, every sort of job you do, you might meet one person yeah. that's going to stay in your life forever. And, yeah, Mr Rim Rinder will... Yeah, he's like my he left arm. He is unique, arm. isn't he's he? <laughs> not only unique, he, we were just saying, he's got the biggest heart and the loveliest mm. soul. He's, mm. I mean, I really feel lucky. And he's great at a party. And, and he, he will be there. At Come party. on next <laughs> uh, Good luck with the album. Thank you Love so much. Lovely to see much. you. And great going back you. into the West End. Thank you.